Belly Fat Contagious. Welcome to my channel where I share a weekly video with you every Monday, something related to perimenopause or menopause. Today I'm talking about belly fat and the stress response. So belly fat technically is not contagious. You're not going to walk past somebody on the street and all of a sudden it goes onto you like you could like you could catch a common cold. However, stress is contagious and stress is largely responsible for the development of your belly fat. So if you're following like a healthy routine already, you're doing your workouts, you're eating pretty well, you know, you're not drinking too much alcohol, um, you are ticking the boxes you think you need to, but you've still got belly fat. It could be down to the fact you're sleeping poorly, which is going to increase your stress response. It could be the fact that you are dealing with chronic stress. Now, chronic stress is something that's over the longer period of time. You hear acute and chronic. Acute is a short period of time. Chronic is a longer period of time. Cortisol is one of our stress hormones. It's developed, it's created in the adrenal glands. It has a very important role in the body. Nearly every cell in the body is affected by cortisol. In the right amount, it is anti-inflammatory. However, chronic stress has an inflammatory response on the body. As we go through the menopause and our sex hormones fall, estrogen, let's just keep estrogen because it's the easy one. We don't need to keep, talk about all of them. Estrogen falls, cortisol level rises that's just the what that's what happens that's what the relationship estrogen comes down cortisol goes up as cortisol rises so does insulin which is your fat storing hormone we have four times the amount of cortisol receptors around our belly than we do in any other part of the body i'll cover that in a little minute why so it's very important that you understand that if you doing the workouts, following the nutrition, but you've got other things that are playing on your mind. It could be emotionally, it could be walking down a dark alley at night every night. It could be a horrible boss. It could be a relationship that's failing. It could be just lack of sleep. I say just lack of sleep. Sleep is the absolute cornerstone of good health. But when things are causing a negative impact on you, and I'm going to go to, into sleep in a bit more detail in a couple of minutes, that has the effect of cumulative stress. Now, I just want to go over sleep briefly because I'm highly likely to forget about it if I don't. And for some reason, my brain will not work today, probably because I was under serious stress not long ago. And I'll talk to you about that as well, because it's made my belly fat get bigger. We have this thing called the glymphatic system. So you, you've got your cardiovascular system, which is the blood. You've got your lymphatic system, which is the lymphatic system, which sort of cleans and detoxes the body but you've also got what's known as the glymphatic system which is in your brain so it's the glial cells in the brain which are cleaning being cleaned out so when you're asleep by the way most people need to sleep between seven and eight hours a night for a healthy body and mind now you might think oh well, yeah i'm fine on four and a half to five hours well, so was margaret thatcher and then she developed alzheimer's not to say that everybody's going to develop Alzheimer's that sleeps poorly. However, this flushing, this cleaning process takes place not just for like half an hour or so once you've gone to sleep. It takes place nearly throughout the course of the night. So if you're sleeping poorly all the time or a lot of the time, you're having a really negative impact on how your brain manages. It's not going to be able to clean itself and restore itself sufficiently. Also know that when you sleep badly, it has a negative impact on your satiety hormone. So you'll find that you're reaching for the foods that aren't really going to serve you very well the next day. So like the, the fast carbs, the refined sugars. Well, when you eat those, that's adding stress to your body because it's setting up a chemical reaction, which is stress, which is going to increase the risk of belly fat. You also lose the response to no longer being hungry. So, for instance, you're eating food, it might be a big bowl or something, and you just keep eating it because your response to tell you that you're full has been dumbed down because you didn't sleep very well. Again, eating too much is just going to pile on fat because if you can't use it, it just gets stored. You know, so it's really important to be mindful about what you eat and to try and eat a little bit slower too. But that's that's kind of another another topic. So and, and brain fog as well. You know, with menopause, we struggle with brain fog. And 
when you are sleeping poorly, that is going to have an even worse effect on how you remember things or how you talk clearly. I really struggle with my words sometimes. And, and often that is due to a lack of sleep. I have a headache today and it's because of this long, horrible stress that I had not long ago. It has a really big impact on you. You can still, I mean, stress kills. You don't need to be a sufferer of high blood pressure. It can just get you. It's you see it in the banking system, you know, when, when we have like stock market crashes and all of a sudden people are literally just dropping dead on the, the floor. That is long term stress that has just got too much for people. So I think we've got used to living in this society where we talk about stress. It's almost become, become a bit of a buzzword and it shouldn't be. It should be something that we're all really on top of because there is no wiggling around it stress kills you apart from making you have belly fat you know the bigger implication is that it might curtail your life so the reason evolutionarily why we have four times cortisol receptors around our belly is in periods of lean so go back to sort of caveman era when we we were we weren't always guaranteed that like i don't know Lidl was open or tesco's was open yeah because we didn't have them in those days and we might not know when our next meal is going to come from or when we're going to have it. So when we were able to store excess fat, so we've managed to catch something big and we can eat it and we keep eating it because we need to carry a little bit of extra. That would be stored around our, our abdomen, our belly, because it's near the digestive system. So it's easy. The, the body doesn't have to go very far. You know, if it was stored in our shoulders. It's, it's further to have to get the food from up here, the stored fat from up here than it is from here. Yeah. So that that would make it an evolutionarily beneficial thing to have some excess around our middle. But we don't need that now. We don't want the belly fat now. And, you know, as we go through east, uh, the menopause, you know, the cortisol rises so necessarily. That's why we see a bit of weight gain. Insulin levels are impacted. Your thyroid may be impacted as well. But if, by the way, if you struggle with like serious fatigue and you're trying to do all the things and it's not working, make sure you get your thyroid checked out. It could be that you've just got an imbalance in your thyroid. It's very common as you go through menopause. And it is something certainly worth ruling out because if you have got an imbalance with your thyroid, it's a pretty simple thing to get fixed. Um, as a psychotherapist, I'm a, I've been practicing psychotherapy for over 16 years and I'm an anxiety specialist, I see what stress does to people. And it can literally turn a successful, flourishing person into this tiny fetal position. That just, it's awful to witness. And while stress, while anxiety is 100% treatable, I really want you to understand that, getting there can be hard work. And it's that cumulative stress that can lead to that anxiety. And you definitely don't want to have that happen to you. It's that there is a positive stress, which is known as you stress, E U stress. And that is sort of a motivating factor. So, you know, uh, you're hungry. That's you stress because it motivates you to eat, which is something that's positive for you. You need to eat in order to stay alive. You might be thirsty. Again, that's you stress. You have to get up in the morning. For instance, when I first learned about you stress, it's when I was learning how to fly the helicopter and they were talking about, you know, you stress makes you take actions to keep yourself up in the air. So, you know, might while you might, especially as a learner, you know, you're pretty terrified about having to come down to land because that's probably one of the most dangerous parts of flying the helicopter. And but you have to obviously to get down to the ground. Well, it's you stress that makes you do the things you've been taught to do, even though you're a bit sweaty and you, you sort of say a little prayer once you've landed the first time safely. But it is, it's that you stress that, you know, you're up there, you're cruising, and then you just think, oh, God, I'm going to have to bring this thing down now. And it, and it's, it is, it's quite scary. I, I remember being really relieved once I'd landed my first solo flight. But that is you stress. If I allowed fear to paralyze me, I would just have run out of, have gas and crashed you know so there is certain amount of things of stress that we need that is a positive aspect of stress like we have to get up in the morning to get on with our day we can't just lie in bed all day long and do nothing again that is you stress that is cortisol we have more cortisol in the beginning of the day than we do at the end of the day so before i talk about the contagion of belly fat lack of stress 
Um, have you ever been in a house with several girls and your menstrual cycles have synced up? I have. It used to happen to me loads. So when I was a student, I shared a house with some girls and our menstrual cycles synced. When I was growing up, I'm the eldest of four girls. There was my stepdad, my mum, and then four daughters. We used to call our house Hormone Hall. And um, it was, and our cycle synced. Now, some people do, some people don't. I'd be really interested, has that happened to you? And if it has, would you comment below? Because I, I think it's fascinating. But the reason this happens is because we, we give off pheromones. We have the, you know, our hormones come out of our skin when we're in close contact with people over a long period of time, nature tends to sync us up. Now I've read a couple of theories for this. The one is evolutionarily again, is the fact that the alpha male, he, when he, you know, what, he needed to make sure that his genes persisted and were passed down to future generations. So it would make more sense for the women to all be fertile together so he could do his business. And then if he cleared off to wherever he was going and never came back, at least his bloodline has had a good chance to be passed down to future generations. Being the alpha male, it's the technically stronger bloodline. I've also read a sort of counter idea to this is the fact that if women were all fertile together it would stop the male dominance because he wouldn't have his harem to inseminate but that kind of says the same thing it's just a sort of slightly different I think control is in the men's camp and control is in the women's camp on the other one so essentially it, it means that he he had lots of women to inseminate before he went off and maybe never came back again and it's just it's that sort of evolutionary factor now, with stress, that has a similar thing. So when you, as a student, I got locked in the lift with one of my French professors. It doesn't bother me. I've been locked in numerous lifts. And I'd always, I'd been locked in some lifts before this happened with my French professor. And I mean, those had been horrible times because the lifts had gone up and down. And I, I was away uh, skiing at one point and I literally had to decide whether to climb up over the, the, the floor because nobody came to rescue me. I was in it for ages and it was late at night and I climbed up over it or jumped through down it because the thing kept stopping in the middle of the floors. And eventually I thought, well, I've got to do something. I can't actually remember which I decided to do now. But anyway, it was terrifying at the time. So I thought I knew if I could get through that, I can get through anything. So I'm in this lift with this woman, this French professor. And um, literally within like 30 seconds, I could think, Oh my god I sh her breathing was going and she was talking this very high high-pitched French accent and I it's just like I, I actually had to be quite cross with her and tell her to settle down because I could feel her stress coming into me it's like her panic was contagious and I thought god if we both lose it there's no chance of us getting out of here so I I could really feel it, it made me feel very uncomfortable and I was, I was not normally rude to people and I almost felt like I had to I was nearly rude to her just to to tell her to get a get a grip and to calm down because otherwise we'd have both ended up in this horrible panic situation which is not going to resolve the situation at all so thankfully we got released from that lift very soon but it was contagious now when you are this has a really Im important impact in society so in the business environment in the school environment studies have shown that or studies point to the fact that it tends to be the dominant person who can leech the stress to people so for instance it could be the ceo in a board meeting and if he's in a high stress situation that is going to leech out to the other people in the room if it's a more socially inferior person and i'm not a very good way of putting it but you know somebody sort of not quite as important as the, the guy at the top or the woman at the top it's not gonna have such a profound impact on the other people in the room. It might on the person sat next to them, especially if they're good friends, but essentially it tends to be the, the, the person who's seen in the more superior position. Same thing with school. So it could be the teacher in school or the professor in your, in your lecture theater. If they are under high stress, it will have more of an impact on the people in that room than if they're in a, a, a low stress mode. Okay, hope that hope that makes sense. And 
And so stress is contagious. Well, stress, if stress is contagious, so is belly fat to a degree, because belly fat is a direct response to your cortisol, how much cortisol you have running around in your body or floating around in your body. So you really need to be mindful of the fact that stress management really is important to you. It's not just going to keep your belly fat off, but it could help give you a longer, healthier life. Cortisol levels, like I mentioned earlier, are anti-inflammatory in the right balance. They are inflammatory when there's too much cortisol around in your body. So a couple of weeks back, maybe not, in fact, probably not even that long ago, maybe 10 days ago, both of my dogs caught hemorrhagic gastroenteritis, which essentially they it's 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 awful they they can sick up blood but it was the back end for both of mine they were both vomiting but look, i mean just like bloody diarrhea it was it was just awful and i and i nearly lost both of them so it was round the clock work to keep them alive to keep them hydrated to keep them fed regularly to just make sure that they were okay um, one of mine was really, really poorly with terrible stomach cramps. So I was massaging his back nearly all night long just to try and settle the cramps down. Then he had antibiotics and that helped. But um, it was horrible. And I slept very poorly. It really had a big impact on me emotionally. I Even once I knew they'd st both started to get back better, it's almost like the floodgates opened and I spent two days of literally just spontaneously bursting into tears because it had been such a horrible time. And it took me quite a while to regain my sort of, there was one day and I thought, oh, I actually laughed. And it wasn't until that I laughed one day that I realized that I hadn't been laughing for so long. And, oh, there's one of my dogs now in the background on the settee. And it was just, it was such um, a horrible experience to see them suffering in such a way. But physically and emotionally, it really weighed on me. And I hadn't been eating particularly well. I hadn't been eating very much. I had no appetite at all. And I noticed the belly fat. It's just like, woof. So when you sleep badly, your belly fat will increase. When you're under stress, your belly fat will increase. When you're not eating enough, that's also a stressor. Your belly fat will increase. I'm just coming towards the end of a four-week gut healing system, and it has allowed it's showed me how much I can eat and weigh less. I've spent years being really careful about what I eat, and this system it's all anti-inflammatory stuff it's not not difficult to follow at all and it was just like oh my god I don't know if I can eat all that and there were some days it's just like Phew, I'm actually not even hungry now and it I started to lose weight up until this horrible stressful time with my dogs so now I'm just coming back to it I'm sort of getting rid of the belly fat hopefully grow will go fairly soon um my sleep is still quite poor I think I'm still I still I got into a really bad habit of sleep and I just wake up and I, I just <laughs> can't go back and I still check on them and it's just had this big impact on me so until my sleep improves this belly fat ain't really going to go anywhere but I can start to make the right choices that are going to help me improve my sleep eventually so even when you're eating well and you're drinking well and you might be getting out into nature which is a great stress buster and unless your sleep is good and unless you can manage your stress effectively belly fat could be a long-term friend now, what can you do? You can get out into nature. Nature has a massive impact on our mental health, our, how we regulate our emotions. It has a, it, it will reduce your stress response. Go and hug a tree. Go outside and walk barefoot because it has a lovely grounding effect. You, you might think it's a bit woo-woo, but when we walk barefoot, we receive negative ions off the earth which helps to dampen the effect of the positive ions that we're consistently surrounded with, with all our electronics, the screens, plugs, sockets, et cetera, et cetera. So barefooting is really, really good for you. It, as much as you might think that sounds completely woo-woo, but try it, see. <laughs> um, focus on good sleep management. It, if it means going to bed a bit earlier and turning out your lights a bit earlier, do it. Another great tip is to journal just journal it out any way that you can try and remove the stress from out up here out onto something whether that's journaling it could be talking to a friend it could be talking to a therapist sweating you can sweat it out as well 
workouts are great for stress busting. Um, you don't need to be in doing a workout that makes you super sweaty either. It's not like you've got to have it dripping out of you. It's not like it's cortisol dripping out of you. Sweat's coming out if you sweat. I don't tend to sweat much, but you do get rid of that cortisol. You help to burn through it as well as flood your body with feel good hormones. Cortisol also, and I noticed this when my dogs were so poorly, all of a sudden my the skin on my face went really dry. And if I sort of did that, it started to come off. And again, that's that's elevated cortisol. It dries out your skin. If you're under long term stress, you might get breakouts. You might get spots and pimples and things. Um, it will affect your hair. It will affect your nails. Adaptogens are something that I drink every single day. I have them in a superfood shake and adaptogens are essentially plants. They're herbs mushrooms largely that help you adapt to stress they help us manage our cortisol levels in our body when i was in uh, cornwall which is when my dogs were so poorly i i ran out of my superfood shake i had packed enough for about 14 days and i ended up being there for about 21 because of the, the dogs being so ill and i really noticed not having my adaption herbs every day because they support your mental health so well um i'm back on them again now like an addict and uh they're making a big big difference i'm just feeling more energized i feel more peaceful uh, and hopefully it'll start to have a positive impact on my sleep again very very soon i'm also very careful about the people i hang out with i'm lucky i can choose pretty much <laughs> i work from home and um i work with social media a lot and i just don't i just don't interact with accounts that are negative and the you know meta has got really good these days at uh, streaming out the wrong people that should shouldn't be coming into your or your inbox anyway. So social media for me, I know it gets a bad rap. I think it's a great opportunity to connect with more like minded individuals. This is social media. You know, it's a great place for learning more. Just don't abuse it. You know, make sure you're not on it for too long. My business is on social media. When I'm not doing my business, I'm off it. <laughs> I'm not wasting time scrolling. It's just like, nope, I've got other things to do. I want to be out with my dogs, get into nature, you know, do things that fulfill me on a personal level and make sure that you're doing things that fulfill you on a personal level. You know, maybe start something creative. It's really important for your brain to have a creative outlet. And it doesn't have to be every single day. But that can be getting into nature. It can be flower pressing. It can be reading. It can be crocheting. It can be knitting. My dogs are playing. Say hello to the other star on the show today, both of you. Yes, you are. Just hello, Muffle. Hang on. Come on, then. You come. Oh. This is Muffle, who was so poorly. And then Snoopy's down here. One more, Snoopy. Come on, Snoopy. <laughs> And this is Snoopy, who was a little rescue cop a few years ago. So um, they're lovely. They're my little friends. Watch your thoughts as well. So it's, it's very easy to let your thoughts run away with you. Your thoughts essentially control your behaviours and your actions. If you are constantly ruminating around things that are negative, which is very easy to do, I think as the human condition, we all tend to focus more on the negative than on the positive. Catch yourself doing it and change that negative thought to a positive one. There's an affirmation that I say pretty much, well, every day, several times to myself, particularly if I'm under duress or something's bothering me. And it's it's simply, I am greater than my fears. And it's a really nice one because it feels like an invisible hug, but sometimes we just need to be reminded that we're more, so much more capable of things than we think we are. And while we might be nervous about something or we might fear something, it doesn't mean to say we should avoid it. Quite often we need to take action on those things that are bothering us most so that we get back into the driver's seat. And, and that can be anything. That can be, you know, does your relationship need to change? Do you need to have a com difficult conversation? Do you need to find a new job because you hate where you're working? Um, do you need to have that conversation with yourself to say, right, enough's enough. Let's draw the line. Let's start to eat better for your hormonal health. When I followed that gut healing system, my menopause symptoms went. They're back at the moment because, like I say, I'm not sleeping well. And um, I am enjoying your glass of red wine in the evening. I know I shouldn't, but I am. 
if I really wanted to get bossy with myself, I will cut out the red wine and I will probably do that in a couple of days if my sleep still hasn't improved. Um, yeah, I mean, we are our own biggest enemy sometimes, aren't we? Here's me sort of expounding how important it is to look after ourselves. And I've just admitted I have a glass or two of red wine in the evening. I'm human. But um, I know that if I really do want to make changes, the, uh, those red wine glasses would go until I've got my sleep back in control. And then once I know I'm sleeping really, really well, I might introduce the odd glass of red wine again. It's all about balance. And it's about finding what works best for you, knowing that there are certain rules that you need to follow for your optimal health. You can choose not to follow them, but then you are likely to suffer more symptoms. The thing with all of this is while we can't, we can't we, we we cannot get rid of stress we can reduce the amount of stress we impose on ourselves stress is always going to be out there things happen life happens but you can completely influence how much you let stress affect you you can choose your response to stress and when you choose your response to stress for a positive response it's going to have a positive impact on what goes on down here around your waistline so ask yourself, what thoughts are you choosing today that will support you? So I hope this has been helpful. Thank you for your company. The title was a little bit of a sort of a, a drag you in. But to be quite honest, belly fat, I think, is contagious because stress is contagious. And if you allow yourself to catch stress and be around circumstances that are stressful for you, you will develop belly fat. So I don't know what your thoughts on it are. Uh, choose your thoughts wisely. Thank you for your company. And if you haven't done so already, click the subscribe button. You can hit the bell icon too, and that will notify you when I drop my next video. And if you've got anything you'd like me to share in an upcoming episode, just send me a message um, either here in the comments or on Instagram at Kate Hartley UK. And I'll be happy to add that to my episode circulation. So thanks so much for your company until talk to you soon.